back to the life of theatrical great Miss Nancy Hayes. Nancy, after Sweet Charity, the roles dry up, but like the trooper you are, you keep at it. And then comes Promises, Promises, and the very successful Irene. It's now 1976 and you throw yourself into your first lead drama role in Same Time Next Year. Now the director is Gordon Hunt, father of Academy Award winner Helen Hunt, and he sends you this message from Los Angeles. I had the best time working with you. It was a thrill and a laugh a minute. I especially remember there was a general strike and you and Louis Fiander were not allowed to rehearse. So I would, instead of rehearsing, we walked you were around Melbourne for about five hours where you were only allowed to talk like a yank and the two of you ended up sounding more like a yank than me. <laughs> anyway, it was a great time and I still have something that I want to show you, which is this picture. If you'll remember, you and Lewis gave this to me as an opening night present and it's treasured on the walls of my house. It's one of the great joys of my life and so are you. Thanks. Nancy, your drive and enthusiasm always earn you the respect of your peers. And here to celebrate with you tonight are three of your former co-stars, Jill Perryman, Julie Anthony, and the boy from Oz, Todd McKenny. Oh. Uh, now, Jill, you and Nancy have appeared in many productions together. How yes, do you keep yourselves busy off stage? Before we even start, can I go back to 1965? Hello, Dolly, that weekend from hell. Mm -hmm. When I was bunged on as Dolly and Nancy had to go into my place, and that show really started the ball go uh, for both of us, really, back in 1965. But since then, you've done quite a few other things, haven't you? <laughs> and working a lot with my husband, Kevin, but I've even bought along me Nancy Hayes tapestry, which is for my glasses, you see, <laughs> and I've got two pillows at home, what you've done for me, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> This is what you do off stage? Well, sometimes. Uh, we were asked, when we were doing Annie years ago, we were asked by some charity organisation, would we do something for a charity sale? Well, I mean, my hobby is only reading or listening to music, and that does, that's not sellable, you see. So Nancy said, look, I do tapestry, or I do fancy work, so I bought a cross-stitch that was already written out, um, my kitchen is my pride, it was written. <laughs> and I did it, and I was very good at it, and then Nancy said, I think you'd better be a bit more adventurous, you see. And we eventually finished our cross-stitches and all that carry-on. Nobody ever came to claim it so I eventually had it framed for me mum what happened to yours <laughs> somewhere at home is it oh darling oh this is, so, no, this is from my husband and then they talk to everybody you, else <laughs> and, and Julie you and Nancy were in the smash hit Irene together weren't you yes when Nancy joined the show about halfway through the run I was totally in awe of this great Australian legend and what she'd think of little old me and one night during the show, I did a couple of scenes and I went off stage and I started to walk towards my dressing room, you know, unzipping the endless zip as I went and I sauntered into my dressing room only to hear these voices saying, I don't know where Irene is. I, didn't you say she was going to be here? Maybe we should get someone to go and find her. I'd forgotten the scene. And I went, ah! and I walked down the corridor, couldn't get my dress done up and I walked on stage like this because I'm all open down the back and Nancy kind of looked around with this little look about me falling out of my dress, gave me a wonderful smile, lifted the eyebrows and went on with the show as if to say, hmm. <laughs> but she was just... Where have you been? Yes. <laughs> what, what, where, yeah. She's wonderful. She's just the most wonderfully warm, beautiful lady and I love it a bit. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. And, and of course, Todd, you've had some advice over the years from Nancy. Yes, Nancy's you? given me a few words of um, advice. And during 42nd Street one day I was doing Wearing the Money, which finishes Act 1, and the abscess burst in, an abscess burst in my mouth, and I was in incredible pain. N everybody ran around, nobody knew what to do with me. I walked past Nancy's room, she grabbed me, pulled me in and poured me brandy flat out. <laughs> I sprayed the brandy, 
got to the dentist and he wouldn't touch me because he'd said, I've been drinking all night. <laughs> But did it work? And it worked a treat. But I had a great time at the dentist surgery. But no, Nancy sat me down during rehearsals of uh, 42nd Street one day. I don't know if you remember at a party we had at a hotel in the Cross, and sat me down and said, Todd, if you're going to if you want to make it, you've got to stop thinking like a dancer. And um, I've kind of always remembered that, and I did. Look at you now. Hey, Look thanks. You now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Well done, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jill. Nancy, your acting skills now begin to cross over to television. First, there's a Sullivan's, the miniseries The Dismissal, and then The Last Bastion. Now there's a million things to be done. And most of them will work themselves out without your divine intervention. Look, I'll be all right once the troop ships get home. They'll get here. You reckon? Every Jap submarine in creation is probably out looking for them. Worrying yourself sick isn't going to help. And at 38, in 1981, you received the Order of Australia for your services to the performing arts. You then star in the acclaimed production of Chicago, which runs for two years. And it's here you meet a certain saxophonist who plays all the right tunes. And it was love at first sight. It's your husband, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you still talking to him? Uh, where will I get him home? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, Mike, it was love for first sight for me, but I had to chase her for 12 months till she caught me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. then we moved in together and uh, only took 14 years for her to ask me to marry her. I don't blame her. <laughs> 14 years. Yes, we, yeah. uh, we got married a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I believe Nancy is uh, a fairly superstitious she is, First, uh, is she? Yeah. yeah, I am. Yeah, rather. yeah. she has a, a little, um, uh, I'm not sure what it is actually, that she has to rub before she goes on every... It's a locket a I locket. have on my plate yeah. always um, that my mother gave me yeah. when I went on and had to succeed. I can saying, never go on without touching without it. Without touching it. Yeah. She has a little saying she has to go through, which uh, it's like a little prayer. And uh, she has a photo of um, her mum, of course, and a mentor, Biddy Pounder. <laughs> And until tonight, probably a photo of me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, isn't there something about you cutting nails? Is that right? Oh, well, she used to hate me cutting my nails on Sundays. I'm superstitious about it. You see, I come from Irish background, you see. That's <laughs> this is the problem. And what is it about cutting nails? Well, my mother, I said, don't cut your nails on a Sunday. It's bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for me. No. <laughs> Bob, would you mind taking a seat next uh, to your leading lady? I'd love to. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, during the 80s, the plays and musicals just keep coming. First, The Conquests of Carmen Miranda. Nicole Kidman and Guys and Dolls. Then, as you reach 50, it's the marathon production of 42nd Street. Almost 1,000 performances and over four years. And all through this period, you choreograph and direct over 20 other shows yourself. What about that, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> and all the time, it's your friends who help you through. People like Judy Ferris, Tony Sheldon, and all the way from Italy, Terry Hughes. <laughs> We got the shoes in yeah. Italy when Where? I was visiting. Where? In uh, um, Castelnuovo, no. the Gaffaniana. Si, si, perfecto. Si. perfecto. Yeah. Terry, you've lived overseas for many years, haven't you? Yeah, about 35, 36 years, yeah. And uh, as a, a sort of um, indicator of how private this woman is, I met her in New York. It took me years to find out what she was doing back here. But I soon found out because I think half the audience has slept in my bed. They'd phone and say, hello. <laughs> 
you don't know me, but I'm a friend of Nancy Hayes. And of course, you know, they'd, they'd come and stay, yeah. And Nance, over the years, left things in the apartment. Finished up leaving <laughs> the hair curlers. Yes. Right. One weekend, a thief got in and stole everything in the apartment. I phoned Nance and said, oh, dear, love, I've lost everything. She said, did he find the hair, hair curlers? Did he find the hair curlers? <laughs> because we'd lost them. We couldn't find them. And there they were sitting right in the middle of the apartment. So, Nancy Hayes, this is your life. <laughs> You're in my hair. What a thrill. Okay? I'm in shock. <laughs> <laughs> and Judy, you and Nancy are very close, aren't you? Yes, we are. It's exactly um, 30 years ago this month and, that Nancy and I first met, and I can say that because she loves dates and anniversaries. And we've been very close friends. We've had lots of ups and downs, adventures and laughs and tears over the, over the years. And um, look, it's been a wonderful friendship and I'm very proud of it. And there's one thing that Nancy does, she keeps her feet firmly on the ground. When the show's over, she goes home into the real world. And then when the curtain goes up again, she goes back even to the extent of getting the bus to and from the theatre. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone who doesn't take herself seriously no, at all. Right. She's been a or wonderful friend. <laughs> <laughs> or doesn't drive. <laughs> She's been a wonderful friend to many people who are just love her and are very proud of her. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Like Tony Sheldon. I was very lucky when I was 10 years old, I was appearing in Oliver, and Betty Pounder very kindly allowed me to sit in on the rehearsals of Sweet Charity. I must have been one of a handful of people who got to see the show before the general public. So I was so overawed by this performance that I used to go to parties and be Nancy Hayes. <laughs> this, I was this 10-year-old extremely fat child saying, if they could see me now, you know. I thought she was brilliant. Little did I know that over the years we would work together many, many times and uh, Nancy's directed and choreographed me in several shows and I've directed two one-person shows with Nancy which requires a lot of trust and intimacy and I think we got through it with no problem. But uh, I think probably my nicest times with Nancy have been at the end of a long day when we go back to Nancy's house and have a glass of wine and put on an old show record or a, a video of a Broadway musical and push all the furniture aside and dance around the living room. Because as they say, you can take the girl out of the chorus, but you can't take the chorus out of the girl. <laughs> never, 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 never. Thank you. Thank you very much all for joining us. Yeah, Thanks, Judy. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. And coming up, a couple of surprises in the wings for Nancy Hayes.